Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. It's actually raining right now. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from, the county or the country, and whether it's also raining down there. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday I did two videos which attracted a lot of attention. In the first video, I opined that George Natembea's activities in Transoia and in Luya Nation is actually intended to achieve certain political objectives. And I concluded that William Samoy Araputo is clearly behind George Natembea. And I've read the comments on that post. Most people believe that George Natembea is working on his own. The truth of the matter is that George Natembea is very powerful. He's very strong in his messaging. He can act on his own. But I don't want to rule out the possibility that someone somewhere is behind his political activities. Because the truth of the matter is that, that if the government wants to stop him, they will stop him with just a phone call away from the EACC. And in the second video, I explained to you guys that the move by Rigadi Gashagwa to boycott William Ruto's event in Nyeri was a clear indication that the two have fallen out. And I've read the comments also about that. And there are those who believe that I'm wrong because according to them, William Ruto sent him to Nyandarwa. Those are people who don't know how politics operates. Time will vindicate me on that. Ladies and gentlemen, in this particular video, I want us to talk about a statement that has been issued by John Mbadi. And that message is a message directly from Raila Amolo Odinga. So I want you guys to pay very close attention to what John Mbadi is saying in his statement, which is very clear that after deliberations and consultation with the party leader, I want you guys to pay very close attention to it. Then at the end of it, I'm going to reveal to you guys the details behind the statement. Listen to John Mbadi. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, my press statement is on uh, generally on the management and leadership of the Orange Democratic Movement Party as the national chairman. And uh, this is the statement. The Orange Democratic Movement is the largest, most organized and national political party in the country. ODM has outlived and outperformed many peers and many older parties and has participated meaningfully in every general election since 2007. The party is proud to be associated with some of the most transformative and impactful socio-economic and political developments that have taken place in this country between 2007 and now. When we said in 2007 campaign, uh, when we said Ugatuzi in the 2007 campaign, what followed was devolution, which had significantly uh, changed the governance structure of the nation. When we also said infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure three times, the country embarked on a transformative infrastructure development agenda that has touched every part of the country by way of road, rail, fiber optics, and clean energy generation that has earned this country international fame as leader in green growth. I think you will remember our 2007 clarion call or campaign of infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. There are people who think that green agenda started with Kenya Kwanzaa, but that is not correct. It is not true. It started when ODM pronounced itself strongly on infrastructure agenda more than 20 years ago. It is a tradition we are deeply proud of and one we would like to protect and preserve as a political party. It has actually taken patience, understanding, ability to make compromises, a deliberate policy of inclusivity, consultative approach, and ability of the leadership to look at the bigger picture for the party to come this far. We have no option but to stay on that path. A few weeks ago, our party leader, the Right Honorable Raila Molodinga, indicated that he will be pursuing interests beyond the country, but he would keep tabs on the party and continue offering guidance when needed. He went ahead to express faith and confidence that in his absence, his two deputies alongside other officials would be equal to the task of steering the party. 
Since then, a number of people have expressed interest in going for various leadership positions and a robust debate has ensued on how best to ensure that the top leadership of this party is broad and inclusive enough to take care of, ev of the very diverse party membership and interest base. As the national chairman of the party and in consultation with the party leader, we are proud of the massive interest shown in the future of the party and the debate on inclusion. It is the clearest indication that the party has relevance in the country and, 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 and the future. I, however, wish to appeal to our people, those who want to lead and those who simply want the party to remain strong, to exercise caution, restraint and moderation. A few processes will have to kick in in line with the party constitution before the party can declare election date. Let us hold our horses and wait for guidance. I call on fellow leaders and those aspiring to lead to ensure their actions and utterances unite uh, but not divide our party. We have a duty to ensure our actions and utterances reassure the party support base instead of causing more uncertainty and panic. I fear that the actions and utterances of the last few days are not in the best interest of the party and of those of the party leader who is keen on an orderly, inclusive and impactful agenda for the party. In the meantime, I would want to call upon the two deputy party leaders, Ali Hassan Jo and Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya, both tested and tried leaders in their own right, to provide leadership at this critical moment as we await guidance on the next steps. I also call on all party officials at all levels to join the two deputies and provide non-partisan guidance to members and would-be leaders. Thank you very much. Honorable CPA John Badi, Ngongo, EGH. Um, if you listen to my statement, I've talked about activities in the last few days. In few days includes today backwards. Up to the number you can call few last days, last few days. And many, many leaders have spoken about the leadership of the party. All of them are addressed in my statement. So are you already... No, that's John Mbadi, the ODM chairperson. And the statement is very clear. If you paid very close attention to that statement, it's talking about a few things. Just very briefly before I give you the, the, the meat. The first thing it's talking about is management and leadership of ODM party. Because you remember, Raila Odinga assigned Joho and Oparanya to take charge. The second thing Mbadi is talking about is Raila Odinga's interest in becoming the next chairperson of the African Union Commission. The truth of the matter is that the moment Raila Odinga will go to Addis Ababa, that will shift the politics of this country completely. Raila Odinga will no longer be a member of ODM party. And he's also talking about Raila Odinga's absence. <laughs> and he's also making something very clear. That Raila Odinga left the management of the party in the hands of two individuals. Hassan Joho and Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya. And Mbadi goes ahead to appeal to party members to exercise caution and restrain. So in this video, I want us to talk about the message which John Mbadi is delivering on behalf of Raila Amolo Odinga. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. What message do you think Raila Dinga delivered in that message? For me, the first message that Raila Dinga is delivering is specifically to Ali Hassan Joho and Wycliffe Ambetsa Oparanya. Raila Dinga is clearly telling the two gentlemen to take charge of the party and offer leadership. The question which I want to ask, why do you think ODM supporters are talking about uh, the next party leader in the absence of Raila Odinga? When Raila Odinga himself has made it very clear that in my absence, Joho Oparanya 
will take charge. Why are we still seeing people like uh, the majority, the minority leader of Pio Wandai, people like Orengo, people like uh, Tandi, and others still talking about the position of the party leader? Why? Well, Rilo Diga made it very clear. It, it's because Joho and Oparanya have failed in offering the leadership. My expectation of the two is simple. After they were tasked, they should have convened a meeting of ODM leadership, top leadership. ODM has structures, maybe the Central Management Committee. Then from there, they were going to offer leadership and address the press without or in the absence of Rilo Diga. The entire management committee, maybe with the support of Rilo Diga from the background, but in the absence of Rilo Diga. And then they were going to assure their supporters that everything is okay. Nobody would be talking about the party leader because that's something that Rilo Diga had concluded. That is Joho and Oparanya. One thing I'm not sure about is how the two individuals will be able to share power because it's normally very difficult. I would have preferred a situation where there's a party leader and maybe a deputy. Maybe they're going to make it alternate. This one serving three months, uh, next month. <laughs> but they must offer leadership. That's what Rilo Dinga is reminding them. Number two, Rilo Dinga is also delivering a message to ODM leaders, especially from the Lu Nation, who issued a statement over the weekend. If you listen to John Buddy's statement, it's very clear that utterances that unite is what they need. Not those that divide. I listened to some of their statements, especially the one from Orengo, and I was actually shocked. Yeah? They were divisive. That there's no way ODM can be left in the hands of someone like Joho. Because Joho is a businessman who is going to sell ODM party. That is someone who has always stood with Rai Lodinga. So they were divisive. They were trembled. And that's what Rai Lodinga is addressing in that statement. Number three, Rilo Dinga is also assuring supporters that everything is under control. Of course, everything is not under control, but he's assuring them that we are still in charge. I'll go, I'll come back. Yeah? But the truth is, Joho and Oparanya needs to offer leadership. Then where they need Rilo Dinga, then Rilo Dinga can come in. And lastly, the intention of that press statement is basically to avert any possible fallout. Because the trajectory ODM was taking, if not managed, was going to land in a ditch. And that ditch is a fallout. Someone like Joho believes that he has offered a lot for the party. He has suffered in the name of the ODM party. Then you hear someone somewhere in Syria telling Joho, no, we are a businessman. We are to a party. You will sell. Then Joho goes ahead and, uh, goes ahead and says something very simple that the leadership of ODM party will not be decided in boardroom, which means it's ready to face these guys up to the ballot. I don't know what you think, but that's my take. Do you think ODM will manage to weather the storm? Let me know in the comment section. Until next time, this is Lima Queen. Bye-bye.